Matthew chapter 5. Matthew chapter 5, verse 9. We have a special guest this morning that's going to to read our text, but we're going to read from verse 9 to verse 13. So uh, listen and uh, pay attention as our, our guest reads. You might not be able to follow him completely, uh, but just listen and read along with him. Matthew chapter 5, verse 9 through verse 13. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called the children of God. Blessed are they which are uh, persecuted for righteousness' sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are ye when men shall revile you, and persecute you, and shall say all manner of evil against you falsely for my sake. Rejoice and be exceeding glad, for great is your reward in heaven. For so persecuted uh, they the prophet which were before you. Yea, are the salt, ye are the salt of the earth. But if the salt has have lost its savior, wherewith shall it be salted? It is thenceforth good for nothing but to be cast out and to be trodden under foot of me. If you don't know, that's my father. He's going to be 88 in November. And when we were at the hospital, we had God's Word out. We were praying and reading our Bible. I said, Dad, would you read this? And, and I'll, I'll tape. So you can see my, my recording's not very good. God's not called me to do that, but I'm thankful that Dad could be a part of our service this morning. Uh, last week we, we talked about blessed are the pure in heart for they shall see God. When your heart is pure, your heart is right. When you're real, when you're sincere, when you're genuine. And that, that's what God wants. God wants us to be real. God wants us to be sincere. God wants us to be genuine. God wants us to be who we are when it comes to our relationship with Him. Not to stay who we are, but to come just as we are so He can change us. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. And when our heart is pure, you look at verse 9, we will want to be a peacemaker. When our heart is right with God, we will want to be right with others. I I want peace more than anything else. I, I don't like war. I don't like problems. I don't like difficulties. I don't like conflict. I like peace. And he said, blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called the children of God. And then you will be able to handle persecution. He said, blessed are they which are persecuted for righteousness sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. It's, you know what? And we will face persecution for what we stand for, for the word of God. Uh, but we can, we can endure, we can, we can withstand that persecution because we know this, there will be a day that we will not have to suffer. There will be a day that we will inherit it all. Verse 11, Blessed are ye when men shall revile you or insult you and persecute you and say all manner of evil against you falsely for my sake. Aren't we seeing that today? For us taking a stand for what's right, uh, people are saying things about us today, uh, about Christians and about the name of Christ and about who He is. Rejoice and be exceeding glad, for great is your reward in heaven. So he's saying when you're persecuted, when you're insulted, when people say things about you that we are not to be disheartened and discouraged about it, but to rejoice. To rejoice that you're going through some of these things. And then he says, great is your reward in heaven. And then he goes back uh, and looks back at some of the prophets for so persecuted they the prophets which were before you. And then we get to verse 13. And that's where we're going to stay at this morning. Ye are the salt of the earth. I don't know about you, but I like salt. I know some people that don't like salt, but I, I like salt. Let me just mention a few things about salt. Salt adds flavor to our food. Some of you are going to say amen right there. Some of you are going to say, we don't need it, right? But it is true. It's used to season 
our food. And I know at times it's not good for you, but it adds flavor to it. It makes things taste better. As Christians, and he says that ye are the salt of the earth, I believe that we should make things better. There's a lot of things in life that it just doesn't taste very good. There's some things that we face that just doesn't taste very good. It leaves a bad taste in our mouth. But he says that you're the salt of the earth. As Christians, we should make things better. In this world that's difficult and full of problems and sin is everywhere, as Christians, he has called us to be salt to make things better. Has Christ made things better for you? He has made things better for me. I had the opportunity last night as I was leaving the church to be able to witness to someone last night. They were coming across um, the parking lot, and it's like I was getting ready to get, go home. I was ready to leave. And it's like the Holy Spirit wouldn't let me. So I didn't know what I was going to get into. But I got out of my car, and I had the opportunity to tell this person last night as they were, they were going over here to the hotel, I had the opportunity to tell this person what Christ has done in my life. And I told them about some of the things that they were involved in because, you know, today sin is very visible today. People can live in sin and they're not embarrassed today. And I said, you know what? Some of the things that you're involved in are going to leave you empty. You're going to be empty from some of those things. Christ is going to give you meaning uh, to life. Salt adds flavor. Not only does salt add flavor, but salt creates thirst. You give someone enough salt in their diet, and it'll make them thirsty. Shake your head. Agree with me. Amen. You put some salty Christians in someone's life, and they will become they will come thirst they will become thirsty for what they have. I'm talking about salty Christians. He says, "Ye are the salt of the earth." We should make people thirsty for what we have. We should live our life in a way that makes people thirsty. Mike Barker, who's preached here on a Sunday morning, he preached our chapel uh, here at Emmanuel Christian School back in the spring, and he said this. He says, you've heard the saying, you can lead a horse to water, but you can't make it drink. Who's heard that saying before? You can lead a horse to water, but you can't make it. You, you've heard that saying before. Raise your hand. I'm going to preach two hours if you all don't get with me this morning, okay? <laughs> yes, can I hear an amen? But here's here's... Here's what he said, okay, there's, there's a good time and a bad time to say man. Was it up there? Thank you, brother, I appreciate it. I'm taking you out to lunch. The second Tuesday of next week. But if you put enough salt in that horse's diet, it will want to drink. That's what we need in Wabash, Indiana. People that will have a thirst for God. Salt creates a thirst. Salt, in biblical times, was very valuable. As valuable as gold. And to think about this, he says, ye are salt. He's talking to his disciples. And in God's eyes, you are so valuable. You're the crown of his creation. He doesn't care necessarily about the trees and the birds, and he does care about those things, and the mountains and the oceans and the rivers. He cares about you. You are the crown of his creation. He cares so much about you that He came and He gave His life and He died for our sins. He cares about us. And He doesn't want us to stay in our sins. He wants to deliver us from our sins. 
He, cre- he cares so much that not only did He create us, but He went to the cross for us. Salt is valuable. Salt adds flavor to everything. Salt creates thirst. Salt is valuable. Salt is also used for cleansing and for healing. Look at 2 Kings chapter 2. 2 Kings chapter 2 and verse 21. I'm not going to get into the background of this story, but I want you to focus on verse 21. He went forth into the spring of the waters and cast the salt in there and said, Thus saith the Lord, I have healed these waters. There shall not be from thence any more death or barren land. What is he saying? He's saying that salt has that effect to cleanse and to heal. He uses us today. Now, he's the one that cleanses. He's the one that heals. But he uses us today. He uses us today to help people. He uses us today to go reach people that have been broken by sin and to try to bring healing to their life. He uses us today to, to go to that person uh, that, is, that has been marred by sin and, 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 and their life is a mess and they're dirty and they're filthy and they need someone to restore them. He, goes, he uses us today to go to that person and help bring cleansing to their life. And he says, ye are the salt of the earth. Salt is used for cleansing, for healing. Salt is used also as a preservative. It prevents food from going bad, from spoiling. It is used to save food and preserve it. Are you with me? Say amen. He uses us today to to bring people to Him. He uses us today to bring people to Him. He uses us today uh, to help people come to know Jesus Christ as their their personal Savior. Here's what our text says. Ye are the salt of the earth. We we think about salt and all that it's used for, and there's so many other things that we can mention today. But he says, as disciples, as followers of Christ, ye are the salt of the earth. And we think about the earth, we think about our community, we think about where we work, we think about where we live, where we're at. We think about Wabash, Indiana. We think about America. And he says, as disciples, as followers of Christ, you're the salt. You're the one that I'm going to use to make people thirsty for me. You're the one that I'm going to use to add flavor and add taste and make things better for people's life. You're the one that I'm going to use for cleansing, for healing, for people that need cleansing and healing. Ye are the salt of the earth. You're the ones that I'm going to use to bring people to salvation today. You're the ones I'm going to use to tell people about me today. Ye are the salt of the earth. For Wabash, Indiana, for where you work, for your community. He wants to use you, the salt, to bring salvation to the people here. But it doesn't end there. He says, you're the salt of the earth as disciples, as followers of Christ. But look at that word, but. But if the salt have lost its savor, its effectiveness, Wherewith shall it be salted? Notice the next statement there. It is good for nothing. But to be cast out and be trodden under the foot of men. Here's what he's saying. There might be a time that you're not going to be effective. There's going to be a time that you could lose your influence. There's a time that you might not have the power that you need. 
There might be a time that the salt is useless. And then he uses this word, these words, it is good for nothing. God has called us today to be the salt of the earth. Where you work, where you go to school, where you shop at, God has called us to be salt, to make a difference. How do we do that? We do that by how we live. We don't say one thing and live something completely different. We need to live for Christ 24-7. And when we're out there in the world, we need to let our light shine. We need to pass the salt. If you are the salt, you need to take the salt and you need to pass the salt. Someone has done that in your life. Someone has, has added salt to your life. Someone has made Christ attractive to you and made you thirsty for Christ. I think of my parents who have, who have been salt to me. They were salt to me. They made me thirsty for Christ. We're the salt of the earth. Are you making someone thirsty for what you have? Are you making things better for those that you're around or worse? Are you representing Christ the right way? We're the salt of the earth, how we live. Do you realize that in God's eyes we are valuable? He created us for a purpose. He created us who we are to make us more like Him, not to change to be who we want to be, but to be more like Him. We're the salt of the earth how we live. What we do. I think of people that have been salt to me. You know what they've done? They have just taken salt, forgive me, okay? And they have just sprinkled salt on me. I remember every night before we'd go to bed, we would have, my parents, we would have a family altar. You know a family altar will, will alter the family? We would have prayer. And I would hear my mom and my dad praying. What were they doing? They were passing the salt. They were pouring out the salt into my life. As a 10-year-old, I got saved. You've heard me share that before. But as a teenager, I, I struggled with God's will for my life. And I strayed. And if you don't surrender to God's will, you will stray. If you don't surrender to what God wants you to do in your life, you will stray. If you're not obedient to what God wants you to do when it comes to His Word, you will stray. And as I strayed, I remember coming home at night. I would come in the door and the family room was right off. Uh, to the entrance into the house, and I would hear my dad praying. I'm not just talking about just praying a God is good, God is great prayer. Brother Sean, I heard my dad praying, and I could feel God's presence. What was he doing? He was taking salt, and he was pouring salt out on me, making me thirsty, making me want what he had. We pass the salt, we pour the salt out on others' lives and, and think about people that have done that for you by how we live, by what we do. 
by what we say. Our words are so important. Look at Colossians chapter 4. Verse 6. There's some salt shakers right here, right, right underneath you if you want to pick one of those up. Pick one of those salt shakers up. And think about this. God has called us, and He said this as followers of Christ, that we are the salt of the earth. What are we doing with what God has given us? We're to pass it on. By what we say, by how we live, and by what we do. I ran into someone at Walmart and I, I'm, I usually don't go to Walmart, but Walmart's a good place to witness. Can I hear an amen? amen? And it was like at an unusual time. I had to run out there in the morning, like 9.45, 10 o'clock in the morning, something like that, and I ran into someone, and this person, they've not been to church for some time, and I said, well, this wasn't an accident that, we, that I ran into you today. I really don't believe in accidents. I believe in appointments. You were here. I was here at the right time. Now you can't get away. Where have you been? I didn't say it that way. I did not say it that way. That's not the way to say it, okay? I did say this. We've missed you at church. That's the way to say it. And then let the Holy Spirit do what the Holy Spirit needs to do. Notice what it says here. We are to be passing salt every day. Pass the salt. Pour it on someone every day. Here's what it says. Let your speech be always with grace. Not sometimes. Always. What comes from my lips is always seasoned with grace. That's what he says. Season it with salt. Add some flavor to it. Make it better. What comes from your lips, what comes from your mouth, make it that it gives life to people. That's what he's saying. We have the words of life right here. Instead of our words being words of discouragement, he's saying you need to take your words and encourage others with your words. That's passing the salt. Instead of using your words to hurt people, you need to use your words to give people hope. Instead of your, using your words to cause pain, You need to use your words to let people know that you love them. Let your speech be always with grace. Seasoned with salt. And then we go back to our text, Matthew 5, verse 13. He says, if you're a follower of Christ, if you're a disciple, he says, you're the salt of the earth. If things are going to get better in America, it's going to be where Christians, followers of Christ, disciples of Christ, realize that we are the salt of the earth and we can make things better. Taking what we have and giving it to someone else. Can I hear an amen? Amen. 
we can make things better. How can we do that? Because Christ has made things better in my life. Think about what Christ has done for me. Last night, in probably less than a minute, I had one minute probably to share Christ with someone. Can you share with someone what Christ has done for you in less than one minute? I mean, they were trying to get away from me. But you know what? When they walk on this property, I thought, hey, fair game. It's like the Lord put them right there. I've missed many opportunities when I didn't do that. Many, many opportunities. Have we got to the point where the Lord would say this? You've lost your effectiveness. And the salt is good for nothing. God wants us to be effective for Him. We need to pass the salt. We need some salty Christians. Now think about this. Not only does He say that, and then we're going to close. I promise you. We're going to close. He says, you're the salt of the earth, but the next verse He says, you're the light of the world. A city that's set on a hill. If there's ever a church and a community that should let its light shine, it's Wabash, Indiana. The first electrically lighted city And think about this, where this church is located. We're on a hill overlooking this city. God, help us to let our light shine here in Wabash that people can see that there is a God in heaven and they can glorify you. Pass the salt and turn on the light because there are some people that are thirsty and there are people that are in darkness and they need Jesus Christ today more than anything else. They need Christ. Help us to pass the salt. Help us to turn on the light. People that are in darkness, people that are thirsty, people that need hope today, amen? Amen. It's up to us to do that. I don't want the Lord to say about me, you've lost your effectiveness. You've lost your influence. What are we doing for Christ? He has done so much for me. Everything. The least I can do is to give Him the rest of my life. Completely. I surrender everything to Him. Let's bow our heads.